Hello, and welcome to another Unity tutorial by me, Thomas Meha. Uh, today we're going to be looking at dialog systems. Uh, I'm going to be showing you a basic system that you could use in pretty much any implementation. Um, every system is a little bit different, so I'm going to be focusing on the shell, how you set up uh, these dialog systems in a state machine, uh, how you get states to open panels and set the scripts to be what you want them to be and have variable options, multiple answers, so that you can have kind of an RPG style dialogue uh, for your game in a very simple way that you can add pretty much anything to once you kind of understand the basics, how it's working. Uh, so I'm going to show you how the final product works, how it looks. Uh, this is the placeholder, it doesn't have to be on, um, and it'll turn off after the uh, so it's basically you walk up and says, hey, you want to see how this works? And when you click different options, uh, it gives you different outcomes. Um, so say yes, and we get a different string here, and we get different options over here. And then the other feature that I really showed off of here is uh, I have a basic inventory manager here. When you hit escape, can see that, um, and this is just empty. Uh, there's there's like 16 spaces in here and stuff for like buttons. I only have one of them turned on, uh, so you can just see that this one is empty. Um, so I want to give an item to the player, and now we have sample. We have a new item in here. Uh, then we can go back and we can take the item away from the player, like that. Very cool. Uh, and go back. And then I have a little description that when we really dive in and start building this system from the ground up, you'll see where you can put in triggers. Uh, uh, a system like this goes very well with an event system. Um, like I have an RPG game where I have this triggered up to the event system that works with a relationship manager and then manages your relationship with each one of the non-player characters that you can talk to. And if they like you, they'll give you quests and items and rewards and stuff. And if they don't like you, then they'll do other stuff like hit you or whatever. Um, yeah, and all of that is very easily thrown into this system. Uh, there's a bunch of different dialogue systems out there that attack the same problem in different ways. Uh, you get a little bit different result. Uh, but all of them, for the most part, come back to just the state machine. So if we look at our sample non-player characters, we see a trigger here, and that is a sphere slider, and then it's a trigger. Um, and I've got a dialogue trigger script that basically says when the player comes in, we're going to interact with them. The dialogue trigger, okay, if it's the player, then I'm going to turn the animator on, I'm going to tell us to conversate, and I'm going to tell us to play the first state. Uh, this line is a design choice. Um, but I, I find this works best and is the least frustrating for players. Uh, that way, if you're in the middle of talking, in the middle of a conversation, uh, and you're like, yeah, sure, like, let's talk or whatever, and then you walk away. Uh, you see that, that by default, this system is still in the C dialogue system state. Uh, that it goes into simply by me answering the first answer is true. Uh, when I talk to NPC, the first answer is yes, I want to see how it works. So it moves to the state and it stays there when I leave. Now by default, if I were to come back in and I were to trigger the UI back on, and so it could just trigger this back on, you can see that it's still in this state. Right? Um, and some people will choose to, to leave it that way. And then you just come back in and it reactivates everything. Uh, right? But I don't like that. I think that's garbage. So when it leaves, it, it just turns it off and it starts over. Um, I, I find this to be the least frustrating from a player perspective. Uh, sometimes you get lost in the middle of a dialogue talking to somebody and you're like, I, I don't. I don't know what he just said or what he's talking about or whatever, and you just want to like start it over and you know, move away from that. Um, yeah, so 
this one design choice that I wanted to throw in there. Um, another thing to mention is we're using a state machine here that's built for animation. Uh, the animator in Unity is very, very powerful. Uh, it's a blanket sort of state machine type system, uh, but it's built primarily to run animation, which means it has some stuff built up by default for animating, because normally this hello would be like an idle animation. Uh, and it would be like, I'm standing here, or I'm shifting my feet a little bit, whatever, and then I push forward, or I start moving, and then I'm going to do my run animation, and all that stuff. Uh, and there's a, a gap between them, called a transition. Uh, when you move from one state to the next, the transition in the middle takes a certain amount of time and has some parameters and things like that. These are actually fairly powerful if you use them the way you should uh, for animation. Uh, however, since we're using this just as a state machine, uh, we want to make sure that our exit times and our transition durations are set to zero. Um, and a reminder, I'm using Unity 5.6.1 F1. Uh, and the exit time and duration time needs to be zero. However, I originally built this system in Unity 5.4.0 uh, F3, or 0.1 F3, something like that. Um, and in that system, these transitions, my exit time had to be 0.9, and my transition duration had to be 0.1. Uh, and that made it work without any issues. Uh, but when I set them to zero, it just got really confused and wouldn't print up any of my dialogue or it would crash the whole system or it had some other issues. Uh, but obviously they fixed that in 5.6, where this is a little bit intuitive to zeros. Uh, but if you're using 5.4 or newer, then you'll have to make this 0.9, or uh, 5.4 or older, so that's make it 0.9 or 0.1 uh, to make it work. And then it'll have to be for every one of these transitions as we set them up, uh, walk you through kind of the workflow to make sure you remember to do that. Uh, I just want to make sure that I mention that like early on and then as many times as I can throughout because this is the biggest cause for bugs. Uh, and when I originally made this tutorial, I had lots of people very upset they're like, oh, I'm looking at your code, I'm looking at everything, everything's set up perfectly fine, and it's not working, and, and this, more often than not, was why. Uh, so, yeah, this, I'm, as many reminders as possible, set these numbers to zero, uh, it just makes your life easier. Okay, uh, so walking, I'm going to walk you through uh, the state machine a little bit, I'm going to talk about what it's doing here. Uh, so like that. And then we're going to play. Um, this state machine, as you can see, is on the sample NPC. It's just this silver ball here. This red ball is the player, and he's got a basic movement script. If you've done the rollerball tutorial, it's basically that script. Um, but our sample NPC here has a dialogue trigger. Uh, if we look at that script, dialogue trigger. Again, we see how that works. We talked about that. Uh, we can see the animator component here on our NPC is deactivated or disabled. Uh, when we walk up to it, it enables. And that's from our trigger. It says, hey, when I enter my on trigger enter, if I'm a player, then if I'm not, if the animator is not active, then go ahead and turn it on. Uh, and set is conversation to true, and say that first uh, introductory state called hello. Because uh, this is a dialogue system, I figure having a state called hello and a state called goodbye is it, pretty intuitive, kind of something you're naturally going to want to do anyway. Uh, so that's just what I call them. Um, so as you can see, hello, uh, if we answer, answer two, which is no, I don't want to see how your dialogue system works, uh, is it, it's just exit. And then it restarts because I'm still triggering that on trigger enter. 
uh, command to restart this. Okay, but down here I have answer one. It's true. So yes, and it moves to this state. Right? Answer one, two, three, and four. Line up the answers one, two, three, and four that are Boolean parameters inside of the animator. Um, again, you can make this as many as you want. And when we dive into the state machine code, you'll see that we can uh, we can we could set this up as just simply a vertical layout group, and then we can add these these toggles uh, as necessary. Um, and you can change them as you want. Uh, this is, again, as straightforward as I can get it, as simple as I can, without bogging you down with feature decisions and design choices. Uh, you know, avoiding as, as much overloading crap as I can and just focusing on here's the core system that can get you started building your own system uh, and like the how you want it to work in your game. Uh, trying to cover as many of the basics with it without as without as much bog down with special features. Uh, okay, so the other feature that I have programmed in here is the ability to give an item to the character and take an item away. Uh, we can see our inventory here by hitting escape. I'm going to give an item to the player, give the item, sample. Uh, yeah, press escape to see my inventory, here it is. Uh, I can go back. This is back up here, so you see dialogue system. Uh, and these are just basically uh, checking to see when you have the item. Um, so it goes from the C dialogue system. I say, okay, yes, I want to take the item. Right? And then I go to take the item. And what this is doing is this is just a dialogue state. And it just lets the player know, hey, I'm taking the item, I'm doing something. And the transitions are what actually test if you have the item or not. Um, so I'm testing if you have the item. If I don't, then, well, I don't have the item, so I can't take it from you because you don't have it. So I saw it let you know, hey, you don't have the item, so we're just going to go straight back here to see dialogue system. Right? Now, let's say I do have the item. It's this transition here. You can see I have the item. So that means I can go ahead and take it from the player. Uh, this is a basic exchange script. I, I wrote this to be the same script to go both directions. It's, it cuts out on work, really. Um, so I, I just test if I'm giving the player a key object and I check this box. You can see the player item check this, check box. I uh, take item, it's just not checked. Uh, and then we have the object to exchange, uh, which either one needs a reference to the object. So there we go. Uh, and then once that's done, say okay, okay, now we don't have the item. Uh, and then I'm gonna let the player know, hey, I removed the item. I'm gonna go back to the main menu screen. We can do that by just answering answer one. Uh, and you notice that all of them have an answer four that is perpetually exit, and it will always be exit uh, because that always needs to be exit, uh, it, because it always needs to say something like exit, or e, or, you know, whatever you want, um, because I have this set up to go from any state, so at any given time, as long as we're doing something in this state machine, if answer 4 is ever marked true, then we're immediately going to close the system. And after we close the system, uh, we tell it to go back to uh, hello, as long as we're still conversating. Um, as long as we don't stop talking, then we're going to go back to hello. Um, and if I remove this transition really quick, and I go back in here, and here, and I leave, then I stay gone, and I don't reopen. And so I come back to the intersect, and then I reopen. Again, that's a design choice, whether you want that to be in there or not. I usually just keep the transition in there and just, just it does it. That way, when it leave, it says OK, and then I, I go back to hello. Fine. Okay. I find that to be, again, the least frustrating to players. Uh, 
Because every once in a while you'll be talking and you're like, oh crap, I didn't want to hit that button. And then you have to walk away, back. It, 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 it totally ruins your abstraction to do that as a player. You're like, oh, I want to talk to you. And then, oh no, I hit this button and now my dialogue's gone. So I have to walk away and come back because I'm in a video game and you didn't realize this is feel real and this just feels weird. Uh, so I find this to be a little more player intuitive. Um, I know I'm talking a lot and I'm explaining a whole lot about how this is already set up before I go back in and talk about setting all of it up. Uh, uh, the reason I'm, I'm going through so much detail and I'm telling you so much is because uh, I, I want you to take from this a general shell that you can apply whatever it is you want to work in your system. So I'm, I'm going to spend time going through every line and why we write each line and why everything is set up the way that it is. Um, even when things are redundant, I'm going, I'm going to explain exactly why they're there and exactly why I'm setting the system up to work the way that it is. That way you can take from this as much information as possible to build your own system to work how you want it to in your case. And then save this, and then I'm going to start to make it So, we're going to project, and we're going to put it call this tutorial thing. Okay, uh, so, <clears throat> what we're going to do in this scene, we could just grab prefabs and all that stuff, but I'm going to show you where all this stuff comes from. Okay, uh, so I'm going to make a new folder, right, so you can see that this is entirely new, uh, uh, in my tutorial asset. <coughs> okay. Uh, I'm also going to make a folder called. <coughs> 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 hmm. Make another folder here called script. Um, I apologize for allergies. Uh, it's just that time of year, so uh, you'll, see me, you'll hear me coughing and all that shit, and breathing heavily, whatever. I, I'm not dying, don't worry. It's okay. Um, Alright. So, I'm going to break this up into an initial intro. Let me like 